Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie with another lesson in System D. And this time, I want to take a look at starting System D network services dynamically. Now, the reason for this is that sometimes you don't want your network services to run all the time. So sometimes you might want for a certain network service to only run when the operating system detects a connection request for that service. So the service will then start up when it detects that connection request. It'll run as long as it's needed, and then it'll go back to sleep until the operating system detects another connection request. Now, that's not practical for all network services, but, you know, it works well for some. Now, back in the Stone Age of computing, early man used something called INET-D to do this. Now, I'm talking about back in the early days of Unix and the early days of Linux, we had INET-D, which was a service which would just listen for network connections on behalf of the other network services. Now, later on, INET-D, in Linux anyway, INET-D was replaced by ZNET-D, which had more features. But either way, they both worked in the same manner. As I said, both of them were system services that could listen for network connections on behalf of other network services. So, for example, let's say that we had an FTP server. We didn't want our FTP daemon to run all the time. We would set it up as either an INET-D service or a ZNET-D service so that when either INET-D or ZNET-D would detect a connection request coming in for that FTP service, it would then wake up the FTP service long enough for the FTP to service that request, do the file transfer, and then it would go back to sleep again. But nowadays, in the new modern world, we have System D. So we can now set up a System D service in such a way that it'll do the same job as the old INET-D or ZNET-D. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and see what we got. So here I'm remotely logged into a Raspberry Pi that's running Ubuntu 18.04, but yeah, it's a Raspberry Pi, but it's still going to work on just a regular server version of Ubuntu on just a regular computer. So it's all the same, right? So what I did here is I installed a program called MicroHttpD. MicroHttpD is a web server that's well, it's micro, you know, just like it says, it's micro because it's very, very small, very, very tiny, and it is ideal for use in embedded systems. And in our case, we have decided we want to go with micro HTTPD because we don't want this to be running all the time. We don't want the web server service to be running all the time. So in order to get around that, we install micro HTTPD because when we do install it, it's going to install as a static systemd service, which will only start up when a connection request comes in. So how's that going to work? Well, first off, let's go let's look here at uh, list unit files. And this will take a moment. There we go. And so we are now going to go down here and we are going to look at the micro httpd service file. And we see that it's right here. And we see that it is listed as a static service. That means that we cannot control this directly. Now, if we go down here a little bit further, we're going to look for another micro httpd file except it's going to be the socket file and we see that this micro httpd socket is enabled so what's that mean well let's get out of this and let's go into the lib system d system directory
and we see there our micro httpd socket file and our micro httpd service file so and i'm not going to edit this we don't want to edit it in this manner i'll show you how to edit it here in a moment the correct way but anyway let's take a look in here And it's being a bit slow. The Raspberry Pi is being a bit slow. Come on now. There we go. So here we have the, the unit up here at the top. This is micro HTTPD is the description. And it shows us where our man page is. And then down here we have nobody as the user. So in other words, this is going to run as a non-privileged user, which is which is very nice. Now, of course, it's going to have to start up with root user privileges in order to bind to port 80, which is a privileged port. But once it starts up, once it, once it gets started and is bound to that port, then it's going to drop the root user privileges, go down and run as user nobody, which is really great, really handy, right? And then we have the group www-data. And then here we have our start command. So it's going to start up with that command. It's going to be micro httpd var www.html. In other words, it's going to be looking in the var www.html directory for the web content files. And then down here, we see standard input equals socket. And so this then is really what's going to work the magic. It's This is what's going to make it so that when a connection request comes in, the micro httpd service will automatically start up so that it's not running all the time. Now, I should mention too that normally, normal circumstances, normal web servers where you're serving out websites for the public, you're not going to set them up as static dynamically started services like that, okay? Because you're going to kill performance like that. But in this case, we're just using a micro HTTPD for an embedded type of device. Very, very low resources. We don't need to have this web server running all the time. So we're just going to set it up here with this dynamic service in order to just make it run whenever we really need it to run, okay? So I do want to get that out there. And also, I hope I'm not confusing anybody too much because I've got this bad habit here of just interchanging the word static and dynamic. But just to make it clear, it's ironic, very ironic, I know. But in order to set up a system D service that starts dynamically when it detects a connection request, we have to set it up as a static service. Does that make any sense? I don't know. But anyway, it's just the way it is, so we have to deal with it. But anyway, let's go ahead and shut that down. And now let's go into the micro HTTP socket. And so here we see that listen stream equals 0.0.0.0 colon 80. So in other words, it's going to be listening for all network adapters that we have. And we could change that. We could edit that to make it so that it's just a certain IP address if we have multiple network adapters. But for right now, we're just going to leave it like that. And it is port 80. And we could alter that too if we really, really wanted to. But uh, for not, right now, we're just going to leave it. And accept equals true. That means that this is enabled. And it means that when a connection request for micro HTTPD comes in, it's going to be accepted or intercepted, I should say, by this socket service. And then it will start up the micro HTTPD server. And also, down here, we have wanted by sockets.target. Now, the sockets.target file is part of the operating system itself. This did not get installed when I installed the micro HTTPD. It's always there. 
So basically they work together. And let's go ahead here and take a look at that too. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Okay, so just description equals sockets and uh, documentation just shows the way to the man page. And it does say, yeah, it's part of system D. So it's part of the operating system itself. Okay, so to see if this works, we're gonna to go to a virtual machine that has a desktop interface and we'll go ahead and navigate to that, which will be right there. There's the IP address of my Raspberry Pi, and you can see that it actually does work. All right, so now, what if we want to disable this micro HTTPD service so that it will no longer be listening for connection requests and so that it will no longer activate if a connection request comes in. Well, we'll look at that next. Okay, first here, you want to note that if you do a pseudo system CTL status micro HTTPD service, you're going to get nothing because, well, it's a static service. So it's not going to be enabled here or disabled or started or stopped in the same way that you would do with the normal system D services. And it's just going to take a moment here to come up. A moment more than I thought because I forgot to focus on the window before I hit the enter key, but that's okay. But when it does come up, you're going to see that it's going to give us an error message saying, hey, it just can't find this service. Okay. So, yeah, it's not there. And if we try to stop it or start it or anything else, again, it's not going to work because, well, it's a static service file. So, which means it's, it's not running. So, we can't stop it, right? So, anyway. What are we going to do then in order to stop it or in order to disable it? Well, what we're going to do is a sudo systemctl edit dash dash full micro httpd dot socket. Okay, we're going to work with the socket instead of the service. So, once it comes up, we're going to come down here and we are going to change this to false. And then we're going to save it. And I hate it that Ubuntu always brings this stuff up in the nano text editor because I'm just so used to Vim. I want to hit the escape key and colon X and it doesn't work. So, in this case, since it's pulling it up in nano, I have to just do... Con Control X, like so, and I want to save it, yes, and hit enter to accept the default name. And now let's do a sudo system ctl daemon reload, and we'll see what we got. And it would help if I were to type it properly. Okay. So now we should be able to come over here to our virtual machine. And if we reload this, let's hope that it will not work. There we go. So our connection has been cut off because we have disabled that socket. Okay, so now that socket is no longer listening for connection requests. And so really that's that's all there is to it, folks. There's nothing more to it. And now, having said all that, how about a word from my sponsor, which is, do do do, it's me and my book, Mastering Linux Security and Hardening. And folks, if you're a Linux administrator, you're interested in getting a possible pay raise or promotion, you owe it to yourself to learn about Linux security. And my book can help you do that. Lots of good information in here. It's getting lots of good reviews. And there's also a companion video course that you can get to go along with it. So check it out. 
Purchase links are in the video description below. I do thank you for watching. If you like the video, be sure to hit like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.